welcome one and all of our 17th session today uh, and very good morning to our family in us pichle 16 session bahut hi acche rahe hain very insightful and today is going to be no different as we have dr annapurna garimela an art historian going to speaking today we also have a special guest to moderate kavita wakna yeah. moderating the session all the way from us she is dialing from new jersey thanks a lot kavita ji my pleasure i just realized uh from from uh i just realized today uh, i mean we just connected today morning and i realized uh kavita's in law side and uh, i belong from the same village from rajasthan and also um, kavita's uh, uh father in law raman lal ji and uh, a great uh, i mean father in law's father uh, and my uncle were very very close friends and very surprisingly also realized that the, the biggest temple in new york uh, in elma street where um, I, i i had been there uh, several times I, i stayed in new york for nine months just to quickly tell you uh, uh, kavita's uncle rajnikant shah and she is a daughter of mridula and kumar pal shah uh their family has worked and designed the construction of the jain temple in elamas uh it's a wonderful temple with all the different sects of jain and i think this is a, probably the the second largest or the largest temple in your uh, us apart from what you see in the bay area and uh, uh the one in new jersey i am not able to siddha chalam one the, in the new jersey siddha chalam uh i hand over to kavita and i hope you all will enjoy the session Namaste everyone. Thank you for having me here today. Um um today I'm talking here from New Jersey. Um and it's wonderful to be connected to our international Jain community um through the Zoom um you know conference. And it is pretty pretty special though we are all um um in our own little worlds being quarantined right now. It uh definitely is um um special to be able to reach out and connect with others and today um when i was given this opportunity i i realized that a whole bunch of my world and our world was colliding and my worlds were colliding and um i have done some a long time ago i had researched um you know jain architecture and it is a big part of my family as well and today I'm, i've been asked to actually moderate um and talk about jain architecture and um with uh, Dr. Anupam Gary Mala so i'm just going to give you a little bit of a background on who she is um and where this conversation is going to go because i'm actually very excited to learn from her and um talk to her about about our um architecture and um some wonderful thoughts behind it so Dr. Anupam Gary Mala is a designer and art historian and practices um vernacular art forms in India after independence. Um she heads Jackfruit Research and Design an organization with a specialized portfolio of design, research and curation. Um her newest book is a co-edited marg volume titled The Contemporary Hindu Temple: Fragments of a History in 2019. In 2017, she was awarded the India Today Emerging Curator of the Year award. Garimala is also the managing trustee of Art Resource Resources and Teaching Trust, a not-for-profit organization with a research library, independent research projects, and teaches and advises college and university students and the general public. Dr. Garimala is actually re- is here with us today from Delhi. So welcome. And today she will be speaking about an interesting topic um called Jain Jirnodhara. though we we may all have practiced jain jirnodhara but i don't think you know especially me coming from the us and being raised and born and raised here in america um i didn't know actually what this topic was until she explained it to me a few minutes ago but it's a lot more deeper and has a lot more thought um and is um kind of at the core of a lot of religions and especially jainism so i'd like to turn it over to dr garimala and if you can please you know kind of start from the basics and let us know what this topic is and why it's important to our religion acha theek hai 
सो धन्यवाद नमस्ते सबको थैंक यू रमेश भाई एंड कविता एंड नील एंड और जो भी हमारे साथ है जिनका नाम मुझे मालूम नहीं है uh, आपको भी बहुत धन्यवाद कि आप हमारे साथ हैं आज मैं शुरू में ये बताना चाह रही हूँ uh, कि मैं जैन नहीं हूँ तो मेरी जो अप्रोच है मैं एक आर्ट हिस्टोरियन हूँ और एक हिस्टोरियन हूँ और मेरी पीएचडी एच और काफी uh, एक मात्र मेरे काम में मिडीवल टेम्पल्स एंड मिडीवल टेम्पल कल्चर्स के बारे में ही है तो uh, और मेरी uh, मेरी जो पढ़ाई हुई थी पीएचडी हुआ था वो सब बेस था ज्यादा uh, तमिलनाडु आंध्र कर्नाटका के एरियाज में मगर इसको समझने के लिए जैसे कि ये बहुत उस समय पे जब मैंने पीएचडी रिसर्च किया था वो 96 से uh, 9, 2000 तक जेन uh, स्टडीज इतने इतने आगे नहीं थे अभी तो बहुत ही आगे हो गए हैं uh, आजकल बहुत अच्छे अच्छे किताबें आ रहे हैं आप uh, uh, देखेंगे तो रिसर्च हो रही है यूरोप में भी हो रही है जेन स्टडीज पे यूएस में भी काफी यूनिवर्सिटीज में भी हो रही है आ, उस समय पे एक स्कॉलर थे पद्मनाभ जैनी जो यूसी बर्कली में सिखा रहे थे एक पॉल डंडास थे और कई स्कॉलर्स थे बैंगलोर में पॉल शेट्टर मिस्टर प्रोफेसर शेट्टर षडक शेट्टर एंड ऑफकोर्स हम्पा नागराज हुन last week and of course there are many many scholars who are jain who work in jain institutions jo bhandaron mein kaam karte hain magar hamare desh mein ye ek problem hai jo bhandaron mein kaam karte hain gujarati rajasthani hindi mein kaam karte hain unki uh, research aur unki unke uh, kitabe wo bahut sare logon ko nahi milte hain india mein अगर आप उस लाइन में हो आप इस उस उस कनेक्शन में हो तो मिल जाते हैं और कई आजकल तो कई जैन बच्चे हैं स्टूडेंट्स हैं जो वो भाषा इतने अच्छे से नहीं समझ सकते हैं तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर आर एंशियंट लैंग्वेजेस लाइक मगधी देर आर एंशियंट यू नो स्क्रिप्ट्स लाइक मोदी एंड डिफरेंट डिफरेंट थिंग्स सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो एट दैट टाइम वट आई हैड डन वॉज टू अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग फॉर माई सेल्फ was to teach myself as much as possible about different areas of of um, jain life and jain practice whether it was in maharashtra or rajasthan or gujarat and of course bachpan se hi main kafi palitana shatranjay ye sab jagah ghumna actually south mein kam dekhi thi south mein actually logon ko kam malum hai ki itne sare jain log hain to jaise maine phd shuru Uh, करने लगी तब मुझे और भी ज्यादा पता चला शान गोला के अलावा तमिलनाडु में भी और uh, केरला में भी और कोस्टल uh, कर्नाटका में भी काफी जैन कम्युनिटीज थे और अभी भी हैं हैं कि आप लोगों से कि जब uh, ये जो मैंने टॉपिक दिया है ये जीर्णोद्धार के बारे में है ना व्हाट इज जीर्णोद्धार इट ओनली अ जैन थिंग और इज इट समथिंग दैट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया so there hasn't been any that much research on this i am maybe one of the few people that has actually said this is a, this is something that we should all pay attention to and uh i've only heard last year that there was another paper presented at the annual south asian is conference at university of wisconsin at madison uh there was a, a presentation on jinodhara and the tantra in the tantric context tantra tantric worship context so let me back pedal a little bit and focus my discussion to uh the area that i know a lot of details about and then in the conversation we can bring up uh other situations uh and uh we can move back and forth between let's say 8th century and uh 21st century right so we can do all those right because i think our, our topic is definitely something that spans many years um, many and is very alive today yeah so jinodhara essentially is a is a very nice word because it's it's in a, in a way it's very simple asapo malum hai if you speak telugu jinodhara i i am the auntie 
Have you digested digested your food, right? So uh, it's a Sanskrit word, and it simply means in in its most basic idea, jiran karna to hai hajam karna, khana ko hajam karna, koi bhi chiz ko hajam karna, to digest. But udhar is a really interesting word. Now, if you open up uh, a Sanskrit dictionary, you will understand that at least there are eight different meanings for the word udhar. And all those eight different meanings are somewhere in the background. Sometimes one meaning comes forward and another meaning goes back. When we think of the word, this sandhi, jirna plus udhar together, jirna udhar, right? So udhar's meanings can be, from example, loan, kisi se udhar lena. It can also mean uh, pre, uh, something that's for the eldest son in the sense of primogeniture. So, sabse bada bacha hai, unka jo bhaag hota hai, family ke jo manat hoti hai, to uska bhaag ka bhi ek udhar kehte the. Wo, ye iskai meanings purane ho gaye hai, aur hum itna istamal nahi kar rahe hai. Magar is shabd ke andar wo sare matlab mein baithe hai, hai na? On, and uh, udhar is also to rise up. So it means, for example, the word udbhav or udbhava. That same word ud comes out of udhar, udbhav, all these, to rise up. So there's all these different meanings, and I'm not going into all eight of them because then I might be a Sanskrit lecture rather than talking about you know that. <laughs> Uh, um, so uh, this is this is this is very important. I've given you what I think are three very important, and also there's another meaning that we should hold on to, which is remainder. Like jo bhag bad jati hai na, wo the remainder. That also that meaning is also there. So now when we look at, I've been looking at uh, inscriptions in Canada um, from several districts. Um, from let's let's say the eighth century onwards, uh, I, I haven't gone farther back than that, but about from the eighth century onwards, just before the time of Shravan Balgola, actually, right, the century before Shravan Balgola's name, and mostly what I can say is that the word Jainodhar was probably at least in this area a concept tied to Jain worship and Jain practices. So Jinodhar has both a ritual function, but it also has a, a kind of practical function. But it also has a philosophical and historical basis in this. So when we think about Jinodhara, uh, we, we, we realize our inscriptions tell us that things fall apart, as Chinua Echebe said, based on uh, Shakespeare's where things fall apart and the center does not hold. And James were very aware of this, that though there's entropy in the world and historical circumstances kind of create situations where the center doesn't hold of your universe, your little world, your community, and you are in a tough position as a ruler, as a trader, as a worshiper, as a family member, all these kinds of things. Now, this is especially important to think about because Jains were never the majority. They're always a small community, a very wealthy community, very influential community, but always a small community. And when you are a small community, you have a lot of different interests pressing up against you and from within you, right? It's not just um, the Shaivites in Tamil Nadu or Vaishnavites in Karnataka or uh, um, the Sultanate rulers in Gujarat or whatever. You have just a lot of different other groups around you, Ajivikas or whatever. So you have there is this, this, this understanding that you have to constantly be aware of your own uh, fragility and vulnerability. And in this fragility and vulnerability, you develop um, certain kinds of philosophical uh, ideas. Uh, this is an argument I would like to make, and we can discuss this further, that certain philosophical ideas and positions are developed which acknowledge fragility and vulnerability, 
but create a space for that to be turned into something that you deal with and dealing with it becomes meritorious, right? So dealing with this fragility, vulnerability, um, the, mar the, 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 the smallness of the community's location, the fact that it's sometimes very wealthy, sometimes it's pressed upon by other communities, sometimes there's infighting between different groups within the community, uh, all these things. These are, this is natural. So a way to deal with this is to develop philosophical positions. So one very important philosophical position, which I am not going to talk about, is anekantavada, right? That you're able to see multiple perspectives and understand that your sense of reality or truth is very partial and that there are multiple perspectives which this can be viewed from. Right, so this is a very important uh, position, and, and it gets interpreted in different ways. Then you can break it down in a lot, and that's what a lot of Jain philosophers do. Like, how do we interpret this anekantavada? How is truth understood from this position, this position, this, all these things? But another very important philosophical position, which I'd like to talk about, is this Jino Dara. Now, why I think it's a very important uh, philosophical. Uh, 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 stance or an idea is because it presents a way to deal with fragility, to deal with time, to deal with things which go, um, th things which collapse and then need to be remade again. Um, and then also provides very interesting pathways for how to be a Jane, a lay Jane, and function in such a way that you are not necessarily able to practice the full set of principles that, say, a Bhattaraka might do, a Muni might do, but uh, you can do things which support a Muni's life or a, or a Matha based life. So let me give you a couple. Huh, please. You have a no, it's, it's, uh, what I just want to, I want to make sure everyone understands is that. Uh, uh, just a small request uh, from everybody. Uh, if the more Hindi can be, uh, if, ah. if a conversation is more in Hindi, especially for uh, Annapurna ji and Kavita ji. So, what are you saying now? That our Jain community is very small compared to other, other communities. So, how can we manage it in this small community? How can we keep ourselves alive? Rakh sakte hai? So, there are two philosophies. One philosophy is that you have to say is a naked man. We have to say perspective is that we have to say 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 that we uh, yeah. unko, unko liye, this is a good philosophy. Uh, unko yeah. bhi participate karne ke liye, uh, Jain, to participate in the Jain culture. Um, isliye, this is a philosophy to consider. Right. So, in uh, Karnataka, there are very interesting hai Jain communities. You have to say राज राजाओं का समय देखेंगे जो आप समझो कि late nine uh, 900s to approximately uh, mid to late uh, 14 1300s right we know that the Hoyslas were there at at the peak when um, uh, uh, the temp जो मंदिर है बेलूर में या हलीबेड में जो बने हैं उस समय पे ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा उनकी बीवियाँ सारे जेन so we don't have a fully हमको पूरा हमको पूरी जानकारी नहीं है इसके बारे में मगर ये समझ सकते हैं कि एक ऐसा समय था जब मर्द होते थे और वो मर्द एक अच्छे परिवार से आके वो अपने आप को राजा बना दिया और फिर वो एक बहुत रईस समाज से आई हुई औरत जो जेन लोग थे उन उन औरतों से वो शादी करते थे 
ठीक है एंड शादी होने के बाद ये औरतें काफी समय तक हमको ये जानकारी ये माहिती मिलती है कि ये कंटिन्यू करते हैं जैन टेम्पल्स को दान देना बनाना सब कुछ करते थे तो अगर और भी रिसर्च करें तो शायद जो हम पर नागराज सर कह रहे थे प्रोफेसर कह रहे थे कि दे वर जैन क्वीन होस्टल कर्नाटका एंड वेरी पावरफुल जैन वुमेन आई थिंक हम अगर और भी पीछे जाए, जाएंगे तो हमको थोड़ा और भी पता चलेगा कि ये औरतें कैसे एक फैमिली में फॉर एग्जांपल विष्णु विष्णु टेम्पल एट बेलूर बट हिज वाइफ इज अंडरस्टूड टू बी ए जैन uh or people in their families are understood to be women in their families and and they make donations they also make donations at other kinds of temples but this is quite common now after the fall of the hoysalas jab unki power khatam ho jati hai aur bahut chote ho jate hain hoysala ke period ke time pe uh hamare inscriptions jo milte hain jo prashastiyan hain jo एपिग्राफी है उनमें हमको मालूम पड़ता है कि ये शब्द तो जीर्णोद्धार है ये इस्तेमाल हो रहा है और जीर्णोद्धार किस चीज की होती है सिर्फ बिल्डिंग की नहीं कई चीजों की होती है ये हो सकती है बिल्डिंग की जरूर ये हो सकती है रिचुअल्स के बारे में ये जरूर होती है नए नए पुण्य काम जो कोई मंदिर के साथ जुड़ते हैं ये सब चीजों के लिए इस्तेमाल करते हैं बट ये नए काम शुरू होते हैं मगर लगातार वो जो पहले गुजर गया था उससे जुड़ते हैं तो ये जो पहले गुजर गया था इसको जीर्ण करके डाइजेस्ट करके फिर उसको उद्धार करते हैं गौरव करके फिर उसको उद्धार करते हैं ऊपर करते हैं तो दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फिनोम and i need to study it much more in very specific detail before i can tell you but i'm observing this from lots of inscriptions that are i've been reading in many districts in karnataka now i want to come immediately to the vijayanagara period which is actually a very very important period for jain in the region so what jain log kya karte the jo जो मठ में नहीं थे जो मुनि नहीं थे जो आमतौर ये सारे सेठ थे ज्यादा से ज्यादा मैं जितना तक मुझे मालूम पड़ रहा है बिजनेस में थे मर्चेंट्स थे है ना वो व्यापार व्यापार करते थे और ये व्यापार ने क्या इस एरिया में ज्यादा जेम स्टोन ट्रेड करते थे श्रावण बेलगोला में आप इंस्क्रिप्शन देखेंगे तो कई बोलते हैं कि हम जेम ट्रेड करते हैं एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट द स्टोन इन दिस रीजन लेट्स से फ्रॉम छत्तीसगढ़ बॉर्डर एरिया ऑल द वे डाउन टू नॉर्दर्न तमिल कंट्री टुडे नॉर्दर्न तमिलनाडु हैज अ सम ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट स्टोन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड इफ यू गो टू लालबाग गार्डन इन बेंगलोर देयर इज अ साइन देयर दैट टेल्स इट समवेयर अराउंड 3 मिलियन इयर्स ओल्ड और समथिंग so there was stone that was mined for gems this is of course the place where golconda diamonds come from and uh, this is the we have many descriptions of the vijayanagara period mines uh, being very interesting for foreign travelers so we know that when jains tell us that they are merchants of jewels that there was a base for them there and uh, in the vijayanagara period many of these jain merchants go to goa to trade so they are trading uh with the portuguese to take gemstones back to europe but they're also buying gemstones from the portuguese particularly colombian emeralds which is what the moguls are so famous for and then the moguls are buying it from them and taking it back towards uh the northern india right in southern india these merchants are in the late 1400s they are looking to revive shravan balgola so shravan balgola when we look at the inscriptions there most of the donation activity almost stops 
in the 12th century, in the late 11th century to, uh, sorry, the late, the, the, the 12th century and the early part of the 13th century, most of the donations stopped. I'm not saying there was no worship. There wasn't a lot of gifting. And what happens in the early Vijayanagara rulers, Sangama rulers, and we have inscriptions for this right at Shavan Belgula. They, for example, put a tax and say that a, small, a, a gold coin can be collected by the Jains for the restoration of the Jinodhar of the ruined temples, Basadis. That's what they're called. Right? So these Basadis need to be renovated. So, and there is another uh, inscription that comes from about the same time, again, the late 14th century, that says, uh, Vijayanagara King says that Vaishnavites, remember, this is Shavan Balgula is right in the heart of Melkote, a very big Vaishnavite temple, Belur, a very big Vaishnavite center, and many other Vaishnavite centers. These are Vaishnavite centers are, of course, part of the Sri Vaishnava tradition that is, sees uh, Sri Rangam as its big base. It also has a huge base. Um, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of Va Vaishnavites here, very important community. So this inscription from a Vijayanagara king says that all darshanas, all ways of looking at the world are equal and they will be treated equal. So this is a very important way of understanding you have this community that's very small numerically, right? But is very influential economically, intellectually, and also visually on the landscape, right? So there's so many temples that were built earlier, and they're still everywhere to be found, right? So we have this act of Jinodhara happening. And one family I followed. An uh, uncle and a nephew who seem from somewhere around the 1380s onwards, if not earlier, I was able to find records. Now, more and more things are being published, so hopefully, uh, I can gather even more information. They were, he was a Jain general for uh, um, Harihara, the Sangama king, and he is going uh, uh, all through making donations in Andhra northern tamil country and karnataka and donating either to vaishnavite temples as the general of, of a vijayanagara king or establishing new temples or doing jinodhar for old temples that were decrepit right so in hampi for example uh in one area there's a jain quarter and we know that he's associated with one inscription tells us that Irugappa, that's what his name is, he built this temple. Then his nephew comes along and he says, I am Irugappa's nephew. And I am following in the noble lineage of my uncle. And you, we must remember that uh, there's a chunk of Southern uh, Indian marriage systems where matrilineage is very important. Not matriarchy, but matrilineage. धन होता है फैमिली का धन एक तरीके से माँ के साइड से अपने बच्चों को भी जा सकती है इसलिए ये क्रॉस कज़न मैरिज करते हैं है ना सो दे गेट मैरी टू दिस वे सो मे बी देर वॉज समथिंग लाइक दिस गोइंग ऑन दैट ही वॉज मे बी इट वॉज हिज मामा आई एम कंजेक्चरिंग हेयर मे बी इट वॉज हिज मामा मे बी ही वॉज मैरी टू हिज मामा डॉटर मे बी हिज मामा Uh, his daughter, he, he could he could say, "I'm following in the lineage." We find this frequently happening in from across various bits of it, historical information. So he's also going around, and he's also doing jinodhar. So what is jin? What is jinodhar actually? What is being digested and what is being udhar? And can you up? also can you also talk a little bit about what was the um, motivation? Well, one thing is that the Vijayanagara kings really wanted to show themselves. So Jains are not always acting just as Jains, no? They're also they're also Kanadigas, they're also uh, Tulus, they're also Vijayanagara generals, they're also merchants. So there's a range of, we all have a range of motivations when we behave, 
were never just one thing that would be like a cartoon person so uh ye log jo us samay pe jinodhar kar rahe the to pehle hi baat hai ki sare inscription mein apne aap ko aise pesh karte hain ki hum vijayanagar vijayanagar raja ke niche hain hum unke dandanayak hain hum unke mandaleshwar hain kuch bhi ho aise aise bata और ये जरूर हमको मालूम है कि ये लोग जो अपने आप को दंडनाथ कहते थे ये खुद जाके युद्ध करते थे और आ, हमारे प्रोफेसर नागराज ने बताया था अंबा नागराज ने बताया था कि ये ये नहीं समझना कि युद्ध नहीं करते थे ले जेन्स ठीक है तो युद्ध करते थे तो एक तरीके से जब वो कोई हिंदू टेंपल की जीर्णोद्धार हो रही थी तो क्या हुआ था एक चीज मैं ये बताना चाह रही हूँ कि ये अर्ली विजयनगर पीरियड जो 1400 के बारे में मैं बात कर रही हूँ के बाद इस समय पे ये जीर्णोद्धार शब्द बहुत जल्दी से वैष्णव और शाइवाई टेंपल्स के इंस्क्रिप्शन में आ जाती है तो मेरे को लग रहा है कि जो लोग वैष्णवाइट और शाइवाइट टेंपल्स को रिस्टोर कर रहे थे इन्होंने जैन लोगों से सीखा है कि ये जीर्णोद्धार शब्द को कैसे इस्तेमाल करना और कैसे काम में लेना अपने मंदिरों में अपने अपने तरीके से अपने राष्ट्र को बनाने के लिए बिकॉज ये ऐसा समाज है जहाँ पे नेतागिरी और सत्ता और पूजा अलग नहीं थे सब एकदम जुड़े थे ठीक है, इट इज नॉट अ वर्ल्ड इन विच द सेक्युलर एंड द सेक्रेट इज डिवाइडेड इट इज अ वर्ल्ड वेन एवरीथिंग इज वर्किंग टूगेदर सो वट सीम्स वेरी क्लियर इज दट प्रोबली द आइडिया जीर्णोद्धार वॉज टेकन फ्रॉम द जैन कम्युनिटी जैन प्रैक्टिस इन टू वैष्णवाइट एंड शाइवाइट प्रैक्टिस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग रेस्टोरेशन आर डन बाई विजयनगर किंग्स at a slightly later period in kolar of an 8th century temple that is associated with a very special tantric cult there's only two uh, uh, examples of that cult's text one of them is written on that temple in india and one of them is written on that temple the vijayanagara kings restored it so they're borrowing things from the jains because the jains have figured out how to deal with this question of vulnerability this question of fragility and why were the vijayanagara kings interested in it they were interested in it because they came to power probably from not very uh, there's lots of discussion about where vijayanagara king came to power but they probably came to power from um, a very modest origins so to present yourself as restoring something is a very powerful way of saying that i am or we are uh going to do something of course the vijayanagara kings were uh, as i mentioned earlier honored the jain community the early vijayanagara kings they honored of course uh the 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 smarta community at uh, shringeri uh the shankracharyas at shringeri they honored uh the uh, uh the the, sh- the shiva temples in hampi they also later on honored all the vaishnava kings so they were playing not playing in a in a funny way i don't mean it in a crude way but they were moving and knitting together a society where they're giving uh, do importance in terms of their politics to each community so they take on this word jinodhar from the from the jain context and and really use it now jains who are with the vijayanagara kings do two things so irugappa that general i spoke about do cheeze karte hain jab wo jinodhar kar rahe hain koi vaishnavite context mein he emphasizes the king but when he is doing jignodhar in a jain context he is emphasizing himself It's because he is a jain you know his act is a jain now at some point i'm not going to go into all of this the amount of attention that the jain community gives to shravan balaguna shifts to the coast of karnataka and this is where professor nagraj really spoke a lot about that day in places like uh, onnavar bhatkal gersoppa all these places and you know we have those gigantic jain statues on the coast of, of karnataka and here a very interesting ruling family that was jain they were called the chautas at mudbidri which is a very important jain center mudbidri they established themselves and their inscriptions are fascinating 
because they say that the, the temple at Murubidri, which is the Chandranatha Tribhuvana Tilaka Chudamani temple, it's based on a Jirnadhar because they found that the statue, the, the murti that was in uh, that temple previously had started merging into the jungle and it needed to be restored, Jirnadhara Marsundu, that's how you say it in Kannada. Uh, and uh, they restored it and then they built this beautiful new temple with the older image right so this new temple of course has a committee literally if you can imagine I, i'm sure you can kavita having been part of it had a committee and each committee had certain responsibilities and they're very clear in the inscription whose responsibility is what they're all merchants who do this restoration but as you understand the Jain community as merchants and as rulers and as Munis, then you begin to understand that the rulers are participating in the Jinodhara of this temple as a way of making a state, a new state, a powerful state, kingship. Mm -hmm. And of course, all state making involves violence. But a better way of making a state is through marriage and the and Jirnodar. So these two things go hand in hand. You marry and increase the Jain community by making new alliances through marriage and making new Jain families and communities. Because each time a Jain marriage happens, there's the potential for seeding a new community, literally, right? New member in the community, new offshoot for the community. But when you do Jirnodhara, you're also taking what was left over from the past, giving it a new life and giving it a new context and providing a non-violent way to increase the state because all these temples were deeply involved in the politics of the state. So the Chautas were deeply involved at Murubidri. They had certain gifts that they made. They funded some of the construction of the temple. The merchants who were lesser in rank, the king, other aspects of it so the whole construction of the temple is like a is like a community formation exercise but also a, a ranking of different members of the community i hope i'm being clear yes you are so i think you are, you are. You're, you're bringing you bring the whole jane community together under um and and, and really thinking your, your thesis i mean this this idea of the jane community being vulnerable um and how do you keep yourself alive is is what you're talking about and giving right. to the temple and, and growing and growing and and creating a place um um you know having a having a sacred space as like a physical um spot where a community can go to um resurrecting that spot shows right. power shows that we are here we are someone who is strong and um we have a physical spot to come to and that just is another way of the jane community to stay alive Yes, and I think this is something we were talking about before this conversation, this lecture or whatever started. You see, the Jains have always been a very mobile community. Right. Uh, as merchants, they've had to move all over. Now, there wasn't a huge Jain uh, community in the coast of Karnataka uh, the same way prior to the Vijayanagara, late Vijayanagara period as uh, before. So what you I think happens is that the Arab trade that's happening on the coast attracts Jain merchants who are going there and they're living on the coast and they are, of course there were Jains there before also, but not in the same way, right? Like what happened when, I mean, Jains did this when the East India Company, you know, and the Nawabs of Murshidabad became really big. Jagat said, went there and at Azim Ganj in, in, in near Murshidabad, you have this gigantic Jain community, which was one of the wealthiest communities in the world, right? So they will move where they need to for their work and they bring a sense of rootedness. So rootedness isn't always just something that comes from the ground up. It can also be planted into the ground. And so Jirnodhar bridges this, both the planting kind of rootedness and the coming up from the kind of rootedness, right? It does both things. So this community that's there on coastal Karnataka is very beautiful. And the way they talk about the whole experience, it, it, you begin to realize that 
the community also was going through a jirnodhar. It isn't just the temple itself, but the community itself is going through a kind of revivification, a revival. And they're using marriage alliances, political leadership, political alliances with the Vijayanagara king. They never stop saying that we are under the Vijayanagara kings. But the Vijayanagara kings had a certain kind of state where local leaders could be very quite autonomous. They were looking for tribute and for assistance in war and taxes, but they weren't necessarily looking to have them uh, become just like them. Though, of course, local rulers practiced lots of those similar things. So James uh, used this Jinodhara concept in a very, um, in a very beautiful and poetic way. Uh, and I think when you, uh, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about your Elmhurst temple, so people. Sure. Well, yeah, um, I mean, it's um, it's very interesting because I think everything you said about the genes historically um, is um, I think um, we're we're actually living today. Uh, Amari family, um, um, New York ma, um, um, I think nineteen seventies teacher, and in New York ma, Saudi Peluje Jane Temple hatu, pura America ma New York ma hatu, Elmhurst, New Jersey ma. Um, and a big nana group building at the nano house hatu and a tiame bada jare nana hata me tia jata every weekend and a um actually ramesh uncle to divas ma bevar jata tia because he was around the corner from there um but um first temple in america and this idea of of this idea of you know that is very relevant because you're taking this temple this uh, old building it was actually kind of decrepit um, and getting old and not big enough for the community. And a lot of arguments going on. Can, do we move the temple? Do we keep it where it is? We can get a bigger lot somewhere else. Um, but instead, there was a lot of discussion about keeping it where it was and reviving it, bringing it back, bringing it to a, um, a stronger position um, and highlighting our religion and saying, you know what, we can make it work here. Within that um, idea of bringing it back, I have to say, um, the idea of unity came about, um, bringing this community together. So now everybody's thinking about, um, you know, giving to the temple. Let's bring it back. Let's keep the murti where it is. Let's just figure out the construction around it. And everybody came together um, in that. And at the Jean Temple in, in Elmhurst, um, it's a place where you have different floors. And every floor is, is pertaining to a different sect of our religion. So you have the Stana classes, you have the Deirabasis, you have the Madra Chandra, you have... Um, the Gumber genes, everyone's doing their own thing, but it all kind of comes together in this one beautiful space. A um, lot of the pieces of the temple are old, are sure. from, you know, must have been brought over from India, um, you know, before, before my family even got involved. Um, but then we've taken that and the community has taken that and actually um, just made it, um, you know, um, a place for genes to go today. And, and housed it in such a way where it's very accessible. So I love that I'm able to put a name to this philosophy um, of something that my family has done, that our community, a gene community has done. I never thought of it as a way to uh, you know, keep a, a, a gene religion, that a religion that is so tender and so small um, and so vulnerable. You know, how do you keep it alive? Yes, marriage alliances are one thing, but this is something that every gene Ham sab kar sakte hai, ham sab involved ho sakte hai, ham kuch um um ya ham paise ke you know dan ke karan or by just being a part of the community, going to the temple, you can keep the temple alive. That's all different perspectives of Jirodhara. Uh, so I want to. I have have a question to. I have a question to both of you panelists. Yeah. Uh, a lot of old temples have been uh, built completely new. Is it a right thing to uh, change complete structure and you don't have any uh, uh, heritage or look like that? Especially, I'm talking about the context in India. Uh, my, my India ki baat kar rahun. Of course, LMS temple, uh, you know, it was a need, a large community. But in India, where historically a lot of old temples has been completely renovated and made it new, uh, is, this, is this the right thing to do uh, that, that you don't have the history of 150, 200 years old? And you completely build new with the new structure. Uh, yeah, please. 
या या आ, आपके लिए है प्रश्न दोनों के लिए अच्छा मैं पहले कविता के साथ कविता ने जो बताया उसके बारे में कहूंगी और मैं फिर आपके प्रश्न से मैं जुड़ूंगी ठीक है तो एक चीज है आ, जब मैं आठ साल की थी मैं अमेरिका गई मेरे माँ बाप के साथ और फिर मेरी पैदाइश हुई न्यूजर्सी में और और शनिवार और एतवार को हमारे माँ बाप न्यूयॉर्क जाते थे शॉपिंग करने के लिए ग्रोसरीज के लिए उस समय पे इतने सारे इंडियन स्टोर्स हर जगह पे नहीं थे जिस जिससे कि इतने सारे इंडियंस ही नहीं थे तो उस समय पे धीरे धीरे से क्वींस में एक हिंदू टेंपल बनाने लगे लोग जैसे कम्युनिटी बढ़ती रही तो ए श्री वत्सन हु इज अ स्कॉलर टेंपल आर्किटेक्चर एंड अदर स्कॉलर्स हु वर्क ऑन हिंदू टेंपल्स इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका और अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड विल टेल यू इज दैट स्पेशली इन अमेरिका इन द 1970s व्हेन द कम्युनिटी वाज बिगिनिंग टू गेन मास बहुत सारे लोग इकट्ठा हो रहे थे इकट्ठे हो रहे थे तो फिर क्या हुआ कि ये एक टेंपल को कई सेक्ट्स को लिए बनाना था ठीक है तो एक टेम एक मंदिर में उसमें चाहे देवी वर्षिप हो देवी की पूजन हो या गणेश जी की पूजन हो या विष्णु जी की पूजन हो या शिव जी की पूजन हो ये सब एक मंदिर में होते थे और इस समय पे जो हिंदुस्तान में आपस में काफी लड़ाई होती है वैष्णवाइट और शाइवाइट के बीच में अमेरिका जाके वो जुड़ गए <laughs> मंदिर के वास्ते है ना मंदिर के वास्ते ही वेरी सिमिलर टू द जैन टेंपल दैट दैट आई हैव एक्सपीरियंस्ड तो मैं ये आपको एक नमूना आपको बताने वाली थी ये बहुत पहले का है फिर धीरे धीरे क्या हुआ कि जैसे जैसे कम्युनिटी जैसे वैष्णवाइट और आयर्स और मोर इम्पोर्टेंट तो फिर वो अपने अलग एक मंदिर बनाने लगे तो मेरी माँ बहुत ही इन्वॉल्व थी मीनाक्षी टेम्पल ह्यूस्टन में तो उन्होंने वो बनाया वहां पर सो इन अ वे दिस इज वेरी क्वाइट कॉमन नाउ टू कम बैक टू वट रमेश भाई वो से क्या है कि अभी एक बहुत बड़ी समस्या है जैन लोगों के सामने इसलिए कि 19th सेंचुरी में बहुत सारे चेंजेस हो गए इसलिए कि जैन मर्चेंट्स बहुत क्लोजली ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी ट्रेड में इन्वॉल्व थे फिर उसके बाद वो कॉलोनियल रिजीम जैसे 1857 के बाद जब राज एस्टेब्लिश हो गया उस ट्रेड में भी इन्वॉल्व थे बहुत पैसे बनाए एंड जैसे हम इन्वॉल्व होते हैं हमारे आ, हमारे लिबास हमारे सोचने की तरीका हमारे रहने रहन सहन का तरीका सब बदलता है आप सबको मालूम है तो उस समय पे एक स्कॉलर है लॉरेंस बैट जो उन्होंने काफी रिसर्च किया है अभी शायद वो किताब भी लिखेंगे कि उस समय 1900 लेट 1900 में एक आदमी था लॉकवुड किपलिंग जो रेडियड किपलिंग के पिताजी थे तो वो हिंदुस्तान में इधर उधर घूम के उस समय के हिंदुस्तान में इधर उधर घूम के काफी जैन लोगों से या एंटीक डीलर्स जो जैन थे या नॉन जैन थे उनसे उन्होंने काफी लकड़ी के मंदिर जो घर में होते थे लकड़ी के मंदिर जो घर में होते थे और जो जैन लोगों ने रेनोवेट करके निकाल दिया उनको खरीद के वो अमेरिका लेके गए इस तरीके से इसके लिए एक कोलंबस कोलम्बस म्यूजियम पे अवार्ट में है और अनेक म्यूजियम्स में है तो उसके बदले में क्या रखे थे लोग मार्बल रखे थे ठीक है ना मार्बल रखने में एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग चीज है बिकॉज मार्बल इज अ प्रेस्टीज मटेरियल राइट फ्रॉम द टाइम ऑफ लेट्स से भिलवाड़ा एंड रानकपुर वेरी लोकल मेटीरियल इट्स वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बट वेरी ऑफन इट वॉज पेंटेड अभी भी आप राजस्थान में जाओ तो आपको एंटिक डीलर के पास जाओ तो कई बार मार्बल को पेंट करके एक मूर्ति आपको बेचने के लिए तैयार करते हैं तो ये सब पेंटेड थे बट एक ऐसा समय आया नाइनटीन सेंचुरी में जो पेंटेड मार्बल को पसंद नहीं कर रहे थे 
because it wasn't considered modern enough. So, jeans, jeans, they don't think about it. They also think about being modern. Right? So, they also think about being modern. Right? So, they wanted, at that time, at that time, to make a marble mandir in the house. This is a big transformation that happened. Nowadays, what is happening is that people are using Korean. They are using uh, fiberglass. They are, because people are building and renovating their houses much faster. So they want more and more new materials. So a material which had no prestige earlier, like who, Koreans for toilets and counters, is now being used for mandirs in a new way. Or cast in, in because of 3D printing, you can cast a whole new mandir right from your printer to the full thing and just install it into the house. Now, this presents a very interesting question. If you look all over our country, you will see what is happening. You will see what is happening in the country. बहुत बड़े मंदिर बन रहे बहुत बड़े बड़े मंदिर बन रहे और ये कैसे इतने जल्दी बन रहे और इतने बड़े कैसे बन रहे हैं because of computer aided cutting technology तो क्या है कि ये सोमपुरा आर्किटेक्ट्स जो होते हैं जो शिल्प शास्त्र शिल्प शास्त्र ये शिल्पी लोग होते हैं they have uh, in गुजरात राजस्थान border areas they have come into the stone cutting business, the digital stone cutting business. So, you can make an entire Jain temple in the computer, part by part, get it cut on stone in the factory, package it by container, send it to the side, unpack it like a Lego. Lego Lego. So, I think mandir ban sakti hai. I'm not bottom to top. Now, what is going to be the result of this is something we all have to think through. It's not just for the Jains, but for all of us. Can I just say something and, here? Um, yes. Um, I think what you're touching on is, um, again, um, for Jains, the, the vulnerability um, of the Jain community. Um, you know, I live, um, my husband and I both are Jain, and we're trying to raise two Jain boys um, in New Jersey, right? And for us to inculcate the religion and keep everything alive um, is hard. It's very hard. And it's hard for people who live in India also. Jo India mein bhi rehte, unki liye bhi mandir jana roj is hard. Hum ya New York, New Jersey, New York mein bhi rehke, mandir jana matlab is like a production. Sunday ko jao ya kuch karo, right? So this accessibility, accessibility of um, manufacturing of murtis or um, even just um, being able to see our temples. Computer ke zariya ab dekh sakte ki mandir ka uh, virtual tour of the mandir ab darshan kar sakte. Ye sab jo ho hai, is it um, appropriate? Is it not appropriate? It's not about replacing, but it is another avenue. It's us, it's us about continuing to build the religion and finding ways to keep it alive. Of course, this is all right, but um, you know, um, when I was small, my mother and my papa took me to go to the whole journey. The journey that I did, when I saw the Pali Tana, and the Shatranjay, and the Kach Bhuj, all the temples I saw, physically I saw, I went to Ranakpur, I went to Dilwar, all the places I went with my family. The journey that happened, the physical um, attachment to Purana temple ke za, jo mujhe opportunity mili thi. Wo itta memorable tha ke mujhe ichcha hoti ke me, mere ghar mein bhi kuch karu. So it's a combination. It's a combination. It, but its accessibility is also very important to keep our religion alive. Especially for people like me. So, you know, if you go to Alapi, mm -hmm. if you go to Azim Ganj in near Mushidabad, so these Alapi, for example, had a, has a, still has a sizable Jain community there. And har gali mein ek choti si mandir hoti hai, jo subay subay dhoti pehen ki, apna lukta leki, aadmi jate hai, 
पूजा करने के लिए वो मंदिरों का साइज बिल्कुल अलग है और जो ये कंप्यूटर एडेड डिजाइन मंदिर आ रहे हैं उनके साइज तो बिल्कुल अलग है नाउ द बिग डिफरेंस बिटवीन से नाइनटीन सेंचुरी एंड ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी इज इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन सो जैन वर्शिप इज पार्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रियलाइज वर्ल्ड सो यू कैन यूज नॉट ह्यूमन लेबर बट मैसिव स्टोन कटिंग टूल्स to excavate rock and devastate the landscape and then bring it into a temple uh, in a, a workshop and reuse it uh, rework with it to uh, make a new right and somewhere in there will be a uh, a possibility of a murti from an older temple or a family or whatever so that continuation will be there but this transformation is happening and it's happening very rapidly and it's not just with the jain community many communities that are doing every community in india is doing this so um whether it's the swami narayans yeah. or or uh, uh the, look at what tirupati did for example uh when the crowds wahan pe bahut itne sare log badh gaye the jo sabse pehle mandap the jo vijayanagara period ke samay ke the usko sare dismantle kar diya aur abhi uske sare charon aur bear kar diya taki queues ko banane ke liye aaram se sab wo flow ho sakti hai hai na sab chal sakte hain ठीक है uh, अभी आप फिलेडेल्फिया जाएंगी तो आपको पता चलेगा कि फिलेडेल्फिया म्यूजियम ऑफ आर्ट में एक uh, मंडप है जो मदुराई से 1911 में मेरे ख्याल से एक अमेरिकन औरत ने मदुराई मीनाक्षी मंदिर से खरीद के वहां लेके गई थी ठीक है तो वहां इस क्यों उनके मंदिर के लोगों ने इसको बेच दिया इसलिए कि उनको वो बिल्डिंग की जरूरत नहीं थी जैसे हमारे पास एक कागज पुरानी हो जाती है और बे बे मतलब की हो जाती है वैसे भी हमारे बिल्डिंग्स भी हमारे लिए कई बार बे मतलब हो जाते हैं आई विल टेक लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड देन आई विल एनी क्वेश्चन टू आस्क देम बिकॉज आई वु ऑल्सो लाइक टू हम चाहते हैं कि आप भी एक प्रश्न पूछे बिकॉज आप एक अलग एंगल से पूछ सकते हैं अनिल भाई जैसे हम प्रिजर्वेंस ऑफ आर्ट और कल्चर की बात करते हैं सो क्या अभी की गवर्नमेंट इसके अंदर कुछ रोल प्ले कर रही है कि ये सिर्फ कम्युनिटी बेस्ड ही है यानी जब हम फंडिंग की बात करते हैं हाँ सो गवर्नमेंट यस तो अभी मैं आपको बताना चाह रही हूँ कि हमारे गवर्नमेंट के पास कोई पैसे नहीं है ओके okay. तो <laughs> आ, तो क्या कर रहे हैं कि ये प्राइवेट पार्टीज को लीज कर रहे हैं जैसे पार्टर रेड फोर्ट में एक बिल्डिंग को लीज कर दिया म्यूजियम के लिए कलकत्ता में कई मेजर कॉलोनियल एरा बिल्डिंग्स को लीज कर दिया प्राइवेट पार्टीज को और अगर आप मंदिरों के बारे में बात करेंगे तो जो एएसआई के अंदर है तो वो तो चल रहा है अगर आप समझ लीजिए कि दिल्ली जैसे शहर में इतने सारे इमारतें हैं और इतने पुराने पुराने चीजें हैं मेरे ख्याल से इसके लिए बहुत छोटा सा बजट है लाइक सिंगल डिजिट करोड़ों में तो ये कैसे कैसे हो सकता है ये नामुमकिन है, है ना तो अभी ज्यादा से ज्यादा इसलिए हमारे कम्युनिटीज में बहुत कॉम्प्लेक्स सिचुएशन कभी कभी बहुत बार आ रही है कि कोई भी शायद बहुत कम लोग गलत काम करना चाहते हैं बट व्हेन वी हैव सो मेनी डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ डूइंग थिंग्स एंड वर ऑल लिविंग नेक्स्ट टू ईच अदर देर इज बाउंड टू बी अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड फ्रिक्शन वेन द गवर्नमेंट At one level wants control, so सारे सारे states में मुजराए board है और या temple अम्बा endowments act है ये है वो है और so this is a very complicated situation. I don't want to take too much time to explain that. <laughs> thank you so, so yes, much. But it's primarily happening through community organizations. Yes. Uh, thank you so, so much, Neil Bhai. I think everybody is waiting. Form. We are we are run out of the time. Fifteen minutes. We are already late. I really apologize. I really thank you, Kavita ji, to taking all the way from New Jersey to attend this. I I really appreciate 
आपने बहुत कोशिश की टू टू मेक इट बेस्ट इन हिंदी एंड गुजराती आई रियली अप्रिशिएट अन्नपूर्णा जी एवरीबडी हुज लिजन लिजनिंग आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू टेल दैट दैट शी ऑल्सो स्पीक टू एंड तेलुगु सी इज फ्रॉम आंध्र प्रदेश एंड दैट्स द फर्स्ट टाइम वी गॉट कनेक्टेड बोथ ऑफ बोथ ऑफ यू हैव टच अमेजिंग टॉपिक्स just to just to quick recap i have seen wooden temples which used to construct in uh, houses which annapurna ji has stolen in pakistan it is well preserved in lahore museum uh, that's my another dream to bring the uh, uh, jain temples in pakistan to the uh, this one and uh, uh, kavita ji i have to tell you in lms temple on that on the top floor astapada uh, temple is there and i tried my best to bid for a idol there which i was unfortunate because i just wanted some memory in the temple but i didn't got the lottery uh, because they they issued the coupon of $1000 and i tried to buy a few thousand dollars coupon but i was unfortunate not to get one idol there uh, which was my dream to be have some memory in the temple thank you so much